We continue uh, this sermon series that focuses on uh, love, on love and family, and how love is uh, so critical in, uh, in constructing our homes in such a way, our family lives, to where we are uh, radiating uh, God's good love, not only to those who are closest to us, but to those who, uh, who are beyond us. On occasion, I have uh, spoken to you about the various members of, of our family. Uh, let me introduce you uh, to another member of our family. Uh, this is Charlie. He's our 85-pound uh, black lab. He doesn't look 85 pounds in that picture. I uh, was holding a uh, treat so he would sit still for the picture. Uh, when he's not eating, uh, he's uh, sleeping. Uh, he certainly uh, lives a dog's life. Charlie likes to go outside and, and mess around. We almost always have him on a leash. Every now and then, uh, though, Cheryl and I will, uh, will let him roam around with, without the leash. We, we live in an area where there's a, a lot of woods, uh, quite honestly, a lot to, to get into. And we uh, let him go every now and then, and we always hope that he will come back. In fact, one of us will say, I sure hope Charlie comes back, and immediately the other will respond in encouragement, well, he always does. About, uh, after about a half hour, we... Uh, we begin to wonder, wonder if Charlie's going to come back. Much longer than that, we, uh, we get a little bit concerned. Our gaze is always outward, uh, looking for Charlie to return. When he does, we, uh, we both uh, receive him well. We find ourselves delighted. We are a little bit relieved. This morning, we uh, consider a warm reception of a different sort. Today we consider Christ's great parable of the lost son. It follows two shorter par parables about a lost coin and a lost sheep. In all three, there is great rejoicing when what was found is lost. The parable of the lost son is one of the most well-known, most beloved passages in all of Scripture. Even those who have never opened a Bible know about the parable of the lost son. Some have even said <coughs> that it is the greatest short story ever told. In telling the, the parable of the lost son, Jesus speaks a clear word about the love our Heavenly Father has for each and every one of us. The story Jesus tells draws us in. We, we listen closely to what Jesus says because we know the love of a father is, is that important. In the parable of the lost son, the father's love is front and center. It is gracious, compassionate, and forgiving. The father's love is, is clear for, for all to see and is a great example for all fathers. Of course, we know that what Jesus is really talking about is the love our Heavenly Father has for every person, no matter how wayward, how mixed up they may be. Even in our failings, God loves us. So let's read the parable of the lost son. We find that in Luke 15, verses 11 through 32. Let's hear this from God's Word. Jesus continued, There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the inheritance. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went 
and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with, with pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and I'm here starving to death? I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He, he ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, I can no longer, I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the, the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. So this is God's word. May it be a deep and abiding blessing to each of us, not only as we hear this word read, but as we uh, make effort now to take our lives and apply them to this word. May God bless us all. The parable of the lost son is really a, a parable about two sons, each had lost their, their way in, in their own way. The problem with the first son, who was younger, was that his priorities were messed up. And because of that, failed to notice his father's love. This younger son was way too struck by the ways of the world, and he chased after them. The second son felt as though love was something to be earned. And because of that, failed to, to, love, to live in the love that was his all along. He had failed to, to really allow himself to be loved by his father. <coughs> Interestingly, we see ourselves in both sons. We too have our priorities messed up. We do find ourselves in, entangled in the ways of the world. We, too, live as if love is something to be earned rather than something to be received. Our story for today has the younger son asking his father for a share of the father's estate. That was a highly unusual request, particularly for a younger son. Besides, the father was still alive. You've heard it said, if you love someone, let them go. If they don't return, love was never there in the first place. If they do return, it was there all along. The father loved his son enough to release him. Now, we're going to be talking about this, this release of the father and how important and critical that is for the flow of this story, how important it is in, in us striking a loving relationship with God, how important releasing can be within family. You, you may have heard this, <clears throat> if you squeeze a bar of soap too tightly, it will slip out of your hand. If you hold it too loosely, it will fall to the ground. That's certainly true for raising children. Raising kids is a, is a process and not an easy one at that. Those of you who have either raised kids or are raising them now have probably noticed that. It's not an easy endeavor. At birth, children are totally dependent upon their parents. 
They cannot make it without somebody feeding them, without somebody clothing them, and even, uh, more importantly, nurturing them. As a child gets older, though, they become less and less dependent. Think about that. It just, it just happens. It's, it's part of the, the flow of, of growing and developing as a person. Children need their independence, but only in doses that are appropriate for their age. I think there's a tension at, at play in, in raising kids. Parents have a tough time letting go, <clears throat> while children have a tough time managing their newfound freedoms. Knowing how much independence to give a child is at best an approximate science. That's, that's true at every age and, and stage of, of childbearing uh, and, and rearing a child, but particularly when it comes to raising an, an adolescent. The so-called departure stage, which is often uh, uh, referenced when, when an adolescence is, adolescent rather, is, is, is ready to, to spring from the house. The, the so-called departure stage of parenting can be downright painful. It's not easy giving up the ones we love. I teased for years that, that Cheryl and I grieved the empty nest for about a decade. Cheryl quite a bit longer than, than me. In the end, we need to love our children enough to release them so that one day they will be well-adjusted, independent adults contributing to society in a positive way. So parents can read every book on parenting. They can seek the counsel of others. They, they can even consult their own parents. But nothing quite prepares them for the grand experiment of raising children, like actually raising children. I know I, I felt totally inadequate when our oldest son, Brian, was born. Quite frankly, I didn't know what I was doing. I can assure you that I, I lifted a lot of prayers God's way. And I continue to, to do that for, for Brian, for his family, for John and his family. As we talked last week, the stuff of releasing your, your children has everything to do with dedicating them to God. It also means dedicating ourselves to God. The two go hand in hand, or at least they should. Releasing and dedicating our children to God, dedicating our own lives to God. When it comes to, to raising our children, we need to consistently pray for God's help. We need to seek God's wisdom. We need to follow God's lead. And above all things, we need to mirror God's example. And we see Jesus teaching about that example in the parable of the lost son. We, we get a sense of, uh, of God's deep love for us, even when we are separated from him, even when we find ourselves uh, in, in, in a wayward state, apart from God. In, in Christ's parable, the father did indeed offer his inheritance. And the first son took his leave. He, he went to a, another country, he spent not only his money, but he spent his life in what's been termed wild and reckless living. We can only begin to imagine some of the things that he got into. It wasn't long, though, before the son found himself with nothing, and he found, and he found himself very much in need. It was while uh, looking up from the bottom of a pigsty that the son came to terms with the fact that he would have it a whole lot better back home with his father. He was awakened to the fact of how much he was missing out on, not the least of which was his father's love. 
As the boy headed home, I'm sure he had to wonder what kind of reception he would receive. He very well may have thought that he would have received a, a tongue lashing, maybe a stern, I, I told you so, or even a cold shoulder. And none of these things happen. Instead, the boy's father received him and did so with open arms. In fact, in, in noticing his son far off, the, the father ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. It was a reunion that was filled with love. The father left little doubt about his feelings for his son. When it comes to home construction, we do well to build on the foundation of love. Our example is God himself, who always receives us in his love. Psalm 103.13 puts it this way. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. God's love is a worthy example for every relationship, for every relationship we have, but particularly for those that we have at home. While God never forces his way into our lives, he stays persistent. His love is always at work. So love should always be at work. Love should always be evident at home. God knows that if true relationship is to be struck, our acceptance plays a part. To be able to share love, for that love to be received, for that love to be reciprocated, to where relationship is indeed founded on love. In the parable of the lost son, the father risked letting his son go so that he might once and for all recognize his need, particularly a need for love, and return ready to receive the love that was his all along. Again, in our relationship with God, our, our acceptance does play a part. God's love always stands consistently. And as we translate that sort of thing into the life of our families, may it be that Love is so strong, so consistent that those, even though they may have released, return, even in their need, and experience that love all the more, a love that was theirs all along. Even the second son, who thought that love was best earned, was left to recognize that the father's love was there all along. And say for a child that always seems to have this need to, to earn uh, the, the, the love of, of a parent. May it be that love is just freely given, graciously given, to where there is a place where that child recognizes that the love was there all along. So then this, in the parable of the lost son, we find that it is really a parable about the love of of a father who stands with his sons regardless of the disposition of their hearts. This is God's way for us, and it needs to be our way with those who are around us, particularly those who are in our families. The call then is to, to find ourselves touched by God's love, and as we are touched by God's love, we find ourselves empowered and enabled to love and love again. In the end, when it comes to family, let's make sure that with God's help, love always prevails. Rembrandt uh, painted one of his more famous paintings a couple years before his death in 1669. You see that uh, painting before you. It's the painting of his depiction of the return of the prodigal. Interestingly, it was painted soon after the death of his son Titus, 
who, with whom he was very, very close. Rembrandt does a, a masterful job depicting the emotion that took place upon his, uh, his son's return. The son falls at the, the knees of the, of the father. And we're left to think that on the part of the son that there are tears both of joy and relief that he has now been reunited with his father. The father wraps his son in a, in a warm embrace that, that oozes with, with love. J- just behind the father is the, the image of a, of a woman. And it's understood that that's a reference to Rembrandt's uh, first wife and Titus's mother, who had, uh, who had also died. Home construction is uh, best accomplished when everyone, everyone, is involved, and love is readily shared. It is not a perfect world when it comes to family. At least that's been my experience, and I figure that you share, me, share uh, with me in that very same experience, that when it comes to family, it is not a perfect world. Family is, is made a, a lot better, though, when we are gracious to one another, when we exercise compassion, and when forgiveness is extended. In other words, when love is at the center of what we do, when love is, is at the foundation of everything that goes on in family. Let's then love each other as God first loves us. He stands ready to help us with that, I'm testimony to the fact that that God is a a great help in the mix of family. In fact, God at the center of family is the very one who leads and guides and directs. He's the very one whose love permeates everything that goes on. Let's love then as God first loves us. He stands ready to help us with that. His love all but seals it and makes it possible. Let's pray together. God, how we thank you for uh, loving us as you do through Christ. We thank you that you have blessed our lives in your love. We thank you, Lord, that um, we have you upon whom to stand. We are thankful that you uh, lead and guide us. God, we're thankful that you have received us and that you envelop us in your warm embrace. We thank you, Lord, that you give us the opportunity to express your love each and every day in all circumstances. We pray, Lord, that every day we are expressing your love working through us to those we indeed love the most. We pray for our families. We pray that you would be uh, evident at home, that your, your love would, would permeate everything that goes on there. We pray that we grow and prosper, not only in our relationship with you, but in our relationships with, with each other. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to come around this great parable You instruct us in so many ways through it. But most of all, we we pull away being well convinced that you love us and that you care for us and that you long to receive us in your amazing grace. And as we share in that grace, may we share it with all who are around us. This prayer we make in the name of Christ trusting in the power of that name for today's world. Amen. Well, let's continue to uh, consider this great, uh, great parable. Let's consider God's deep love and his amazing grace. You're welcome to continue your prayers. This chancel is open to any and all who would wish to come. I'll invite you to stand. We'll offer our voices to God as we sing that great hymn, Amazing Grace.
how great thou art. Let's stand. We'll sing together.